Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 28th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Anthony Egan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we come together on this 28th Sunday of the church's year, we call to mind our sins, but above all, remember God's grace and mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you alone, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of fed things, full of marrow, of choice wines, well refined. And he will destroy on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the, vest, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation, for the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Lord's own house I shall dwell for length of days unending. In the Lord's own house I shall dwell for the length of days unending. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures 
where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. He revives my soul. In the Lord's own house, I shall dwell for length of days unending. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. Though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear, for you are with me. Your crook and your staff will give me comfort. In the Lord's own house, I shall dwell for the length of days of my life. You have prepared the table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. In the Lord's own house, I shall dwell for length of days unending. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house, I shall dwell for the length of the days unending. In the Lord's own house, I shall dwell for length of days unending. Our second reading is taken from the lecture of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and want. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we might know what is the hope to which he has called us. Alleluia. 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 My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, again Jesus spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a marriage feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the marriage feast. But they would not come. Again he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have made ready my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the marriage feast. But they made light of it and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed these murderers and burned their cities. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the streets, and invite to the marriage feast as many as you can find. And those servants went into the streets and gathered all they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there was a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, 
bind him hand and foot, and cast him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Once upon a time in heaven, a conservative theologian arrives at the pearly gates and, met by St. Paul, who was on reception duty that day, is taken on a tour of heaven. Now, he is more than a little surprised, since he believed that only Christians of his own denomination were saved. To find things, how shall we put it, a little different? As they walked along the shiny streets of heaven, he sees a multitude of people. Jews, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, and other faiths going about their business happily together. They come to a plaza decked with many tables where figures he recognizes engage with one another in a friendly mix of banter and debate. Sigmund Freud wagging his cigar as he debates the human psyche with St. Augustine. The prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Amos arguing points of social justice with Karl Marx as waiters bring successive bottles of wine to their table. Martin Luther King Jr. and Mahatma Gandhi discussing the strategy of nonviolence. Indeed, there's even Pope John XXIII, Nikita Khrushchev, and John Kennedy sharing vodka and reminiscing on the near miss of the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. There are so many faces, the theologian recalls, that his mind goes blank. Overwhelmed by it, and filled with a sense of confusion, he stumbles on with St. Paul, heading down an increasingly narrowing road. What says St. Paul? Spit it out. I'm confused. What about? Heaven is so open. All kinds of people. All kinds of Christians. Non-Christians. Muslims, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists. All kinds of people, says the theologian. His words trailing off. Bit of a shock to the system, says Paul. No, I was there once. Thought only Jews were saved, only Pharisees, in fact. Paul adds, by the way, what was your field of theology? Dogmatic theology and ecclesiology, the theology of the church. Figures didn't do a lot in the Bible. A bit, the basics. Clearly you missed that bit in Isaiah 25, the heavenly banquet, where God brings all peoples to the table. Or even that story the boss told his crew about the wedding feast. He lifted the idea from Isaiah, you know. But that's the idea of universal salvation, that all people will eventually be saved. Wasn't that early church theologian, origin of Alexandria, condemned for saying that? Yeah, by sections of the church, yes. But you know the boss. He had little respect for the establishment back in the Palestine days. He's just the same. <laughs> you should see him when the church does something stupid even today. We have to call in his mum and Mary Magdalene to calm him down. So you're saying that universal salvation is real, that all will be saved? Eventually, yeah. Now, of course, there's free will. You can obstinately refuse grace. Some idiots still do. But we believe they'll eventually come right. But, but what about punishment? In the parable, those who refuse the king's invitation are killed, and the man who was then thrown out. It's a story, man. A bit of dramatic license. And he has a bit of the actor in him, you know. Sure, you used a bit of drama when you preached. Hope you did, at least. Otherwise, pity the congregation. In any case, that's all about freedom. No one's compelled to accept God's grace. No compulsion in religion. 
All those characters are those who refuse grace. Don't forget, that king fella called the odd guest friend. Even then, the offer was open. At the end of the street, they reach a monastery circled by a high wall. From behind the wall, they hear a range of songs, Latin chants, hymns, gospel music. Who's there? asks the theologian. Mostly Christians, ones who think they're the only ones in heaven. Of course, even here, the door's unlocked. They're welcome to join in the heavenly banquet. Paul looks at his watch. Speaking of which, the heavenly banquet is about to start. Care to join us? So then let us together share our faith in that heavenly banquet as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. And so as we reflect on this invitation to the heavenly banquet, let us bring before the Lord our prayers and petitions. We pray that the Lord may open us to grace, that we may share fully in God's heavenly banquet. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that God's church filled with the spirit of openness, may be a place of inclusion and welcome to all people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the universal vision of Isaiah and Christ may inform all dialogues between our churches, that we stress what unites rather than divides us and work unceasingly to full Christian unity in diversity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that all faiths may be inspired to work towards mutual respect and present a united voice for toleration. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that all, particularly those who lead, may work for the end of those forces that divide us, racism, nationalism, sexism and gender discrimination and gross social inequality and build a world that approximates God's heavenly banquet. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Perhaps for a moment, bring before the Lord your own prayers and petitions. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. Loving God, who invites us to the great heavenly banquet, help us to work with you towards making that banquet part of the reality here on earth. We make all these prayers in the name of Christ the Lord.
And this is to you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. And accept the sacrifice at our hands, the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all His creatures. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us. And though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation, and as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you. We join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offering and pour out on them the power of your Spirit that they become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing he was about to reconcile all things to himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more gave you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, 
and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope, Muti our Archbishop, Duncan his Auxiliary. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you <coughs> take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, my brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, 
We invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mass has ended. Remain in the peace of Christ. Thanks. Thanks.